I am Dr. Nanette Winger from the Emory University School of Medicine in Atlanta, and I have just presented at the scientific sessions of the International Academy of Cardiology in Boston. Now, we're talking about cardiovascular disease, talking about the sex differences and the cardiovascular consequences of diabetes mellitus. Half of your patients are women. And women who have diabetes, compared with their male peers, have adverse consequences. And because of that, the American Heart Association decided to assemble a panel to explore these sex differences, and it was my privilege to be a member of the writing group of this paper. Now, it's important to realize, and it's why we cardiologists have assumed interest in diabetes, that cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of diabetes, morbidity, and mortality. It accounts for about 75% of the hospitalizations and over 5% of the deaths. But women have a threefold excess of coronary risk compared to men, and diabetic women have a twofold excess of fatal coronary risk compared with non-diabetic women. Now, Myocardial infarction occurs earlier and has a higher mortality in diabetic women than diabetic men, and diabetic women, importantly, have a much more adverse cardiovascular risk profile. They have lower revascularization rates, both with percutaneous intervention and with coronary artery bypass surgery. But importantly, there is a bias because they're less likely than diabetic men to receive guideline-based outpatient and acute coronary syndrome therapies. So we're looking at issues of biology versus bias, and likely it's both. Now, not only coronary events, but incident heart failure is greater in diabetic women than in men. And in the Framingham Heart Study, the heart failure risk was increased fivefold in diabetic women compared with twofold in diabetic men, as obviously compared with non-diabetics. Now, diabetic women, as we've just said, have a higher prevalence of risk factors, and those include hypercholesterolemia, physical inactivity, and overweight. And despite this, they're counseled less about nutrition, about exercise, and about weight control. Not only that, but diabetes increases the stroke risk more in women than in men. But interestingly, data on the relationship between diabetes and the stroke type and the effect of diabetes control or duration on stroke incidence is still not yet well explored. Now, little is known about sex differences in the diagnosis, symptoms, and treatment of peripheral arterial disease in diabetic patients although we do know that women fare worse than men. Women with peripheral arterial disease and diabetes respond less well to exercise training than women without diabetes and than men. But women who undergo revascularization from peripheral arterial disease have a lesser long-term survival. Our surgeons don't like to see us send women to them, and they have excess post-surgical mortality and the reasons remain to be explored. Now, women with diabetes and heart disease have poor control of both diseases. As I've said, they receive less intensive medical treatment than diabetic men, and I think that may partly explain why cardiovascular death has decreased among diabetic men, but not women. Now, what do we want from research? Research should elucidate the sex differences in racial and ethnic subgroups of diabetes. We've not explored that yet. In glucose and insulin metabolism, and we've not explored that. In pharmacotherapy, and particularly in lifestyle interventions for diabetes. And we yet have to learn about the effects of PCOS and of gestational diabetes on cardiovascular incidence in women, and obviously these are problems unique to women that require exploration.